My friends, if you've been following my YouTube channel regularly, then you know that I just recently announced that I'm retiring from building and repairing musical instruments. However, I do have two instruments left on the shelf that need to be repaired. We're going to get to the first one of those right after this. Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop with the first of the final two instruments that I plan to repair and return to the customer. And I guess I'll ask the question, where have we seen this before? This adjustable bridge and it is pulling off the instrument. So we are going to have to remove this bridge, replace it with a non-adjustable bridge, and set it up to play really well. So come along with me while we do that. The first thing I like to do whenever I'm about to take the bridge off of a guitar is to look down the top and see if the neck angle looks like it's about right. This one does look like it's about right. It possibly might be just a hair high, but I think it's easily workable with a new bridge here. I think we can set it up to play just fine. So, I'm going to go ahead and get the strings off this and see what we need to do to get this bridge to come loose. Now that I got the strings off, I've started unscrewing this mechanical gadget here. In my opinion, was the biggest mistake Gibson ever made in building acoustic instruments was putting these adjustable bridges on. Yeah, I know it makes it easy to adjust the action, but sometimes easy is not necessarily better. I know there's gonna be bolts on this, on both of those, and then on underneath here too. So there's at least four bolts and screws that we've gotta get out of here. Just seeing if anything's loose in there, but doesn't feel like it. I know we're not going to reuse this bridge, but I don't want to just tear it up because I can always put it in the case and the customer can have it. And then, you know, if for some reason they would ever want to restore it, well, then they could. But I don't think there's ever a reason to want to. It would never be my decision. So I'm going to see if I can just get inside there and get these nuts loose and see if this will all come apart. You can see I got the first one out. There's two washers and a little nut there. Uh, this one here is really close to the other nut and I can't quite get this little socket on there. Just figures. It's got to be complicated. Can't be simple. Just isn't enough room to get it on there. It's not coming loose because I cannot, there's just not enough room. There, it's so close that the, even as thin as that is, it won't fit between the nut and this other nut. Maybe I can get the big nut off first and then I can get to the little one. Well, I'm trying this uh, tool that was given to me by uh, Les Thomas, I think is, is the name. And uh, it's a cool little tool, and it does kind of get on there. Uh, that, like I said, they're so close together, but I think I did get it with this thing. It, it is very helpful that it's got these big holds that I can get my fingers on, as my hands are so sore these days. So it really is working pretty well. I think I got it. Got the nut out. I think there's still a washer up in there. Let's see if we can get to that washer later, maybe. Try to get the nut off of this one. Okay, that one there, the I got the nut and the washer off. Go back to this one and see if I can get the washer to loosen up. Maybe it'll loosen up if I get this little nut off. Maybe I can get that nut off now. Yeah, it came loose. The nut itself fell on the inside, but there it is. I got that too. So we got all the parts there. Now we just need to get the washer off this 
larger bolt here. May have to try to get in there with something and pry it loose. I think the washer's just embedded up in the top is what I think it is. Yeah, it's just stuck there. That's all there is to it. It's no big deal. It's just stuck in place. It's loose. I just can't get it out. They've got another little metal piece in there around the peg holes to keep the pegs from tearing out, I guess, which is not a bad thing in a way, but it's just more metal up in there that we don't need. Well, I got the washer off finally. There's still a piece of metal in there that I would like to just get out if I can get it out. Ah, oh, there it came out finally. The bolts themselves are loose now. The bridge itself is still tight, so we'll probably have to heat that up and hopefully lift it out without. I won't have to destroy these little inlays that way. We'll see what happens. Well, I've got my homemade uh, bridge heater here. Presently, it's about 140 degrees or so, as you may be able to see on here. I have it set to go up to 420 degrees, and this is Fahrenheit, of course. We'll let that just get very warm for a little while, and then I'll turn the camera back on and see if we can remove this bridge. We're about up to temperature now, and I've been heating the knife a little bit, so the knife should be pretty hot. We'll see if we can get this to slide under there. And of course, I'm trying to do it without taking those uh, screws out of the bridge. I think it'll work. I've done this before, so I kind of think it'll work, but you never know. There we go. I think we're going to get it. I don't like to come from the front side if I can help it, but sometimes you just kind of have to do that. There we go. I think we're loose. There we go. Came off with almost no tear out at all. A little bit right there, but that's very, very minimal. It's the next day. The bridge is off of this thing, and I'm going to need to make a new bridge. So I already, off camera, cut this one out. It used to be together like that. And so I ripped a piece out to make the new bridge out of. And this is more than thick enough, and it's more than long enough. I've already marked it for length here, so I'm going to go cut that off. Okay, I've got the block sized pretty well. Now I'm going to center it. I've got the ends just a little bit longer than the original, uh, the new block. And so now I'm going to center it on here and trace the outline. And when I cut this outline out, I'm going to try to leave the pencil mark so that it stays a little bigger. So hopefully you can see that there, uh, the pencil line, and I'm going to go to the bandsaw and leave the pencil mark. And now, so I don't make any mistakes, this top on this is the smooth side, but I'm going to try to smooth this side out also. So I'm just going to write top on this, and that way I'll know that it doesn't get turned around the wrong way. Because the, the way I traced it was like this. And so this is the bottom and this is the bottom, see? So I wrote top on that side. Now I'm going to run this through the thickness sander and get it nice and smooth. Now, now that I've got it smoothed on the bottom as well and, you know, thickness so that it's all the same size. So I'm going to see where I want to uh, start and stop the scalloped area. So I'm just going to make a line right about here. That will be about it and about right here. And so now I'll just go push this into my thickness sander until I get to that line and we'll thin it down 
to approximately the same thickness. I'll probably leave it just a hair thicker than this because this is pretty darn thin. And it's better to have a little bit of meat there so that it doesn't, you know, uh, flex and pull the top up. The ends of this one vary quite a bit. Um, 116 thousandths, 105 thousandths, and yeah, it, it depends on where you measure it. I can get 125 out of that. So mine, I've got this one down to 130 and 130. 130 on both sides. So <clears throat> that'll be real nice and consistent. And it looks really nice. A nice quality piece of rosewood. Probably matches the fretboard even closer than this one did. Anyway, we will... Uh, clean the area off and get this thing glued in place. Well, I don't know if I'm going to drill the holes ahead of time or not. Maybe I will. I have to think about that. I always have to think about the holes on how I want to handle the holes. Every time it's a little different. Like, see, the problem with these holes, with this screw still in there, I'd have to trace them from the back side. And there's nothing wrong with that. I may just do that. I'm leaving a little bit of overhang all the way around. And I may just go ahead and clamp this like this and trace those with a pencil. That's probably what I'll do. I don't know what else to do, really. It's, you want to try to not create any more turmoil in this area. It's better if you can go through the same exact holes rather than create new holes and weaken the top that much more. Let's see if I can cl clamp this down right there and maybe clamp it down right here too so it doesn't have much of a chance to slip and then look at it really close and make sure I'm the way I want it to be. Then we'll draw these holes on there. Got my 0.5 millimeter pencil so this will draw a nice fine line. I may try my transfer punches and see if I can make them fit these holes really tight. And if they do, I'll probably go ahead and use the transfer punch to start the uh, center, to mark the center. Having this pencil lead on here too is not bad because then it gives you a visual also. Transfer punches don't always work on the wood like this because they're, a lot of times they're wallowed out and they're not the same size and shape. Like that, that hole there I think is quite a bit bigger than the rest of them for whatever reason. Okay, so I found a center punch, transfer punch, that fits it pretty tightly. And I'll just give it a light little tap. I've got it on this wood. The wood's kind of giving on me, so I think I'm going to put it on a little bigger piece of wood. Maybe it'll hold still better. I don't want to hit it real hard because I don't want to take a chance of splitting the wood. I might even just go ahead and leave this clamped up and go over to the drill press and drill it like that. Having the little center punches in there helps guide the drill to the center. So I might just go ahead and use this as my drill guide. In fact, I think I will. I'll go over to the drill press and we'll get this drilled out. Well, we're going to drill these things out. I think we've got a good setup here that should make it uh, very successful. There you go. I think that did it just about as good as it can be done. And we'll worry about the saddle and all that after we get it on the guitar. Off camera, I cleaned this up a little bit more, rounded over the edges and sanded it a little bit by hand and got it in pretty good shape. It's just about ready to go on there. The only problem with that is that we still got these metal things here, plus we still got the finish encroaching where the bridge is going to go. And so we don't want that either. So we've got to get all this area cleaned up and we got to get these metal pieces out of there specifically. And 
I don't know. Sometimes they pop right out. It looks like this one's going to pop out, but it's going to chip the wood to do it. I don't like it when it chips the wood, but on the other hand, they usually do. So what I'll do is I'll get some glue and get it under that chip. But you can see there, that's the hardware that was in there. And let me see here if I can... I'm lifting up on the inside as I tap that, trying to break it loose. There, it looks like it's broken loose. And it looks like that one's going to come out without chipping too bad. So there's the other one. So that took care of that. Now what we need to do is get this mounted on here really well and trace around it. Um, I see some uh, splinters in these holes, so I'm going to clean them out a little bit. I'm not going to ream these until I get it glued on here, and the reason is because it could, I think with this thin area right here, reaming these now could cause it to break or bust out. I think once it's glued on here solid, it'll be a lot more, so a lot more solid. <laughs> be ready for reaming then. So really what I got to do is line up these holes and line up the marks of the bridge. Just try to cover all the areas that have been damaged and get the holes lined up. And that looks pretty good right there. Get some more light on the subject here where I can see down in the holes better. I think I'm going to try to clamp that right where it's at. This clamp's almost too long. Never simple, you know. It moved it. Uh, it's already moved it, which I didn't want it to move. Starting to get tight there now, maybe. Let me get this back where I want it. Pretty darn good right there. Get it pretty darn tight and where it doesn't want to move. And now I'll get a fresh uh, X-Acto blade out and we'll trace around this. Okay, I got one of those new blue X-Acto blades on here. These things are really good. These are like the original blades. These are awesome. I do have a link to these blades in my uh, products I use page on my website. Uh, I promise you these are worth the little bit of extra money you spend for them. They don't, they're not as brittle. They, uh, they got to keep their edge really good. These are just great blades compared to the other blades that you can buy over the counter. I'm trying to just cut through the finish and not cut the wood. Okay, I think that got the whole back and this side. Now we got to get this side or this end and the front edge. Now we'll get the front, and I think we've got it. I'm going to do it in two parts because I can't reach under this clamp any further. Now I'm going to turn it around just to, it's just safer to do it the, the most comfortable way you can do these kinds of things. It's, it's better not to try to reach and stretch. It's better to just make it comfortable. I think we got it. I'm going to go ahead and take this off now. So you can see there, there's quite a bit of finish that we need to remove. We'll get all of that off there before we glue this bridge in place. I've got my little homemade tool that I use. This is just a little thing of aluminum with one of my finger plane blades in there. And this is all beveled down where I can get down low. And I like this little round type uh, finger plane blade because I can kind of rock it and lift finish and just do very nice detail work with it. You could use a regular straight chisel for this, but I just find this easier and more controllable for me without uh, gouging either. It also, you know, like the square corners on a chisel like to gouge a lot more than this does. There's 
also little pieces of wood left on here from the bridge, so we're gonna get rid of that. We've gotta clean up this one chip out and get glue under that too. But that's not a big deal, I don't think, as long as we don't lose the chip out right now. I've gotta keep my eye on that so we don't lose it. You can see here how the finish just made a long strip. And while that's not a lot of finish that we're cleaning off, every little bit is, is uh, strength. It's just that much more strength. And I don't want to give up any strength. I want all the strength I can get on a blue job like this. There's quite a bit more finish on this back side. And this is where your real strength comes from, so it's good to clean all this off. I'm real happy to get this out of the way. An old battered case, weathered and worn, with the hinges all rusted. And the fabric all torn But still cradled inside Was one old precious thing It was Grandpa's old fiddle Oh, how sweetly it rings Grandpa's old fiddle Played sweet melodies He played it from his heart for mine Old hands, he held it with love, and I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. I think that's pretty good. I think we got it cleaned off pretty well. I'm gonna set this on here and see how well it kind of fits and see if it moves it's you can see it it locks in pretty good and that's what you want you want it to lock right into that spot I think we think we got it all right so we still got this one little flake here that kind of broke up I'm gonna lift it up try to anyway it's kind of pressed back down in there yeah I got it I think Gonna lift that up and I'm gonna get some uh, tight bond under there. I was thinking about filling these extra big holes, but I don't think that's really all that necessary. I've done it both ways over the years and I've never had a problem either way. The most honest man that I ever have seen and his time on this old earth was more and I try not to get too much glue on these things I try to keep the glue to a minimum put it on as about as thin as I can get it but full coverage the more glue you have the more squeeze out you have the more the bridge likes to slide around so you're better off to keep it just as thin as you can keep it, but get full coverage. And that's full coverage right there. So let's see how well this will stay in place now. I'm hoping it'll stay in place really well. It feels like that's locking in real good right there. That's nice. It's really nice when they don't slide around. I had to go get different clamps because the clamps that I typically use are just too long for this guitar. I don't know exactly what the difference is, but it is different. So I don't have time to figure out all those differences and calculate everything. All I know is I just fix the problems and go on from there and that's all I'm doing here. These clamps here would work but they're pushing the back of this 
hole very hard and it's very difficult to manipulate them. So these, this clamp here fits it just perfect. I got her all cleaned up now. There'll probably be a little bit more squeeze out as I tighten this down, but I just wanted to get it started first. These here, I, I, I don't really put any pressure on these end ones until till the very end because you can cause the uh, top to bow if you do that. So you leave those kind of loose, just barely touching until the very end. I do have a call on the inside in case you're wondering to kind of keep the clamps level. All right, and now I need to get another clamp for this side over here. And I don't think any of the clamps I have handy will work, so I'll have to find one. I think to keep things symmetrical, I'll just move this clamp over to this area here. Move this one over the other way just a little bit more if I can, right about there. And then we'll put this bigger clamp in the middle. Assuming I can get it to turn here with all this stuff in the way. There we go, we got it right in the middle. And like I said, it might be hard to get it to turn, but I think I can do it. That'll put some torque on them. Again, when I do this, I try to get them really snug tight. Just very tight. Not crazy, ridiculous tight, but very, very firm tight. And you can see that squeezed out a lot more glue. And now I'm going to tighten down these ends just a little bit, but not crazy on them either. Because again, you can force a bow into it if you're not careful. Now we'll get some more water and do some more cleanup. It's precious to me. He lived on Current River at the mouth of Blue Springs, and at night the hills. Now we'll take a dry towel and dry it up. That went about as good as it can go, and. That's a pretty much guaranteed to stay in place forever. That bridge should stay there, should never give you any trouble. So we'll let that set overnight. Well, because of stuff, it's been about a week since I've worked on this guitar. First thing I'm going to do is ream these holes out a little bit. My process for doing this is I just take my little violin reamer and go down in there till it goes till it touches my finger and then that's usually enough. Though I feel like these are a little bigger for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why, but they feel a little bigger. It will do the same process I always do and we'll see how it goes. We may have to modify this a little bit. This one's stuck. There it is. Okay, the reason I wanted to do that is I want this pin to fit in there so that I can see about setting the intonation. You know, someone suggested that I just set the intonation right here off the bridge. I'm going to try that, and, and I think it will work. And I have done it that way in the past. I don't know why I don't always do it that way. But maybe I'll remember why when I uh, set the saddle on here. It might be a little tight. I'm not sure. But we'll give it a shot anyway, and let's see how it goes. I guess one of the reasons is this is going to make this string a lot shorter so I went around here twice. I would like to reuse the same strings as these are brand new strings so I hate to just waste them on one try. So I put an extra wrap around there just to help me when I restring it later. All I'm trying to do at this point is just get a mark for where the saddle goes. A 
I'm gonna find a real thin saddle that I can sit on top of here. You can see I have a wide variety of used saddles to choose from and I try to find the really thin one in this case so that I can get the action approximately where it needs to be. This is between 90 and 100 and that's close enough I think for, for setting this intonation. The next step is to tune up these two strings to pitch. That's pretty close to uh, the E, and now I'm going to note it at the 12th. It's a little bit sharp, so that means this distance is too short. So I need to move this saddle back that way a little bit. It's not very sharp, just a little. Now I'll retune it open again. Note it again. Well, it still says sharp. Not quite as sharp, but so we'll move it back a little bit more. Well, something's playing games with me here. Still a little sharp. <sighs> Doesn't seem to be changing. That's what's weird. Keep going back and I just keep getting same sound. That's pretty close there. All right, we'll try the, e, the treble side. Still a little sharp. That's right on the money there. That's really good. Just a fuzz sharp. Really good. That's really good. So I think we've got it right where we want it. There's where the saddle slot will be cut. Well, I was just wanting to try to see if that uh, intonation is about the same. And I'd say it's close. I'd say mine's back, though, probably. A, it's hard for you to see this on camera because, I'm, because these screws are in here, so I'm having to hold it up above. And I'm lining up the holes. 
that are there and this saddle is on the very back edge of this so I would say that the instrument had to be pretty sharp all of its life so but it, the angle looks exactly right according to this but it's this new saddle is right on the back edge of this slot so you know considering that the way these uh, saddles were cut on these and I, I've got it right here to show you you can see that they're um, very wide and it was either riding in the middle or on the front edge uh, it would not be riding on the back edge as, as far as the string goes so it couldn't have been the act the intonation couldn't have been right so this is going to be much much better in terms of the intonation for this guitar and I'll take this very fine pencil and mark under the two E strings and I mark the front edge because that's the important part and then when I take this rig off then I'll draw that line straight across there and then we'll set up to route that well, as I said, I need to draw this line across, extend it all the way across. And that's so that I can line up my router bit. Okay. The other thing I want to do is mark a start and stop place. I don't know. I'm probably just going to eyeball this and make it about an eighth inch, something like that. Um, in fact, I'll just use this and mark it right here. So I'll stop the uh, saddle at those two points there. When I route the saddle, I want my bit to be behind this line. In, in, the, in other words, the front edge of the bit, if you will, will just be touching that line, but it'll be behind the line, and that's very important. When I set my rig on here, I want everything to be level and flat. This has a raised pick guard and it does have screws. I probably could take it off, but you can also get into a can of worms doing that. So rather than get into that can of worms, I'm just going to slide this over until it bumps the pick guard like that, my little rubber pads. Now I could probably move the rubber pad back over a little further and get a little more extension but then it would be unstable. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I think my base will let me go this far and make it to that point. I hope it will. Okay, I've got all my rig kind of set up here and I've got to the best of my ability to eyeball this. I've got that bit lined up with the very back edge of that uh, pencil line. I'm gonna adjust it just even ever so slightly even as we speak here. I like that, looks better. That looks pretty good. I also have the bit basically just touching the top of the bridge right now. So I'm going to use the plunge feature of this. Um, drop this little pin in here. I'm going to put oh something that's roughly a hundred thousandths thick. I'll just take something like this and measure it and see how thick this is. 115 thousandths, that's a good good amount. So I'm going to um, lay this under here, I hope, and then drop this pin down on this, I hope. There we go. Tighten this up. Then, if as long as this doesn't move right here, um, I can take this hopefully take this plastic thing out and I may have to actually adjust this to do that. I may have to loosen this up. Get the plastic thing out and now if I plunge it all the way to where that pin is touching I'll be about a hundred thousandths, hundred and fifteen thousandths depth on my bit. So that's what we need to do then. We got to plunge in right here so I can open this back up. I don't have to have it plunged yet. This is always the nerve-wracking part of this. It, it's, it's the make or break time. It's where everything can go south and screw up everything all in a heartbeat. So I have to be very careful with this. 
Lots of concentration. Here we go. <laughs> pretty good so now from that point there I'm going to put this insert in again and we're gonna route that much deeper it's important that you don't move anything if you really want your depth to be accurate all right once I get it under there I'll lock this back down so now my depth is set to plunge that much deeper and here we go Grandma and me. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love, and I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. Well, I think I was successful. No catastrophes. I did cut this saddle further this way, so I went ahead and cut it further that way too to make it symmetrical. So everything's cool. It's just a longer saddle, which is a good thing actually. I always like the longest saddle I can get in there and we're just fine. Well, I cut out a piece of deer antler and uh, <clears throat> went over and made it approximately the right thickness. It starts down in there in a place or two, you know, uh, it, it's pretty close to going, but uh, before I get it any fur further along, I'm going to uh, try to cut it to length. So I'm just getting an approximation here. And I'll cut those off, round it over a little bit, and we'll see how it fits in there. I'm going to scrape this a little bit down in there. Every time you go two depths, there's always a little bit of a lip. So I just try to scrape it a little bit and clean it up a little bit. I think we're probably still just a hair. Just going to try to kiss it just the least little bit and take just the least little bit off of it. Well, off camera I did a number of fittings on this and I've got it going all the way down in there now. At least I think I do. So I just drew a line on it to check the depth. It looks perfectly symmetrical, so I think we're good. Put it back in there. I know the saddle that I used was pretty close to the uh, right height. If anything, it was just a little bit high. That makes it good to use for marking here. Now I can cut it off to that line. I'll actually leave it just a little proud of that line just to be safe. And uh, we'll bevel the back side of that. Well, I've got it set, so it should be really close. Before I string it up, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do a light fret leveling and recrowning on this. It looks pretty good, and I don't see a lot of fret wear. Well, actually, there is some up in on the first three frets, but but there's not, it's not real bad. So I think it's just gonna need a light leveling job and recrowning and we'll be ready to go. I'm gonna do that off camera because I've shown it so many hundreds of times already. And we'll get back to you when we get her strung up. Well, I've leveled and recrowned and sanded, polished the uh, frets. Um, I didn't do anything to the fretboard. I uh, protected the fretboard so that it didn't get scratched because the fretboard's in really very good condition. There's no reason to do anything to it. So let's put a little Be Good Oil on, on the subject here. Might as well put some back here. In fact, I didn't really sand this bridge now that I look at it. I might as well do that a little bit too. So I'll take this saddle back out, sand it just a little bit with 220, and then we'll oil it down. Well, just a boy had the time I remember 
And I'm gonna bevel the tops of these holes, which I really didn't do yet either. So getting a little ahead of myself. Let's get that done. When grandpa had that old fiddle, some old tunes he did play. Well now grandpa, he has left us for heaven above. But he left me that old fiddle and now I play it with love. Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melodies. He played it from his heart for... Factory fresh now on the fretboard and on the bridge. Now, all I gotta do is find out what I did with the saddle after I took it out, which I am not 100% sure at the moment. I must have slid it back here. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna get the strings on it and then I'll let you hear it. Well, I'm gonna check the action at the 12th fret and at the first fret. I thought it was gonna come out really, really close but I have a feeling it's a little high and I'm gonna check that right now yeah it's high quite a bit high actually didn't think it would turn out this high it's uh, right at hundred and twenty thousandths so wow I have to take a lot off to get that down yeah it's pretty high I really didn't think it would turn out that high let me look down the neck and see if the truss rod is loose probably that could be the problem well I don't really see much underbow there much relief so I don't think the truss rods the issue I think the issue is back here at the bridge and saddle I did make the bridge a little little taller than the old bridge I probably have room to cut the saddle down but probably not without taking the bridge down just a little bit. So I think we're gonna have to make a fairly big adjustment here to get this to play really, really well. And I don't want it to go out of here playing halfway. I want it to go out playing really well. The action at the first fret is really high too. Yeah, I'm not sure where to start here because the action at the first fret's really high also. I don't think the action at the first fret will get me down to where I want to be. Not sure what the action is at the first fret, but I'd say it's at least three times what it ought to be. So I'm going to take it way down and see where that leads us. It's, it's really high. And of course that means it's been really high its whole life. Grandma and me Wrinkled old hands He held it with love And I can still hear it Playing up in heaven above Alright, it's still a little bit high But I'm going to leave it there Because I'm going to check the Action at the 12th fret And see how much we improve that We should have improved it some Oh yeah, we improved it a lot. We improved it over 10 thousands. That helps a lot. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop these up here a little bit. You know, I'm not gonna make any of them tight. I'm gonna leave them a little bit loose because I'm gonna have to drop the saddle some more still, but we definitely gotta do some major setup on this. This, this is really, I can't imagine somebody playing this all these years with the setup because it's pretty bad and it looks to be original to me. It doesn't look like it's been changed. The old fiddle is ringing up in heaven above. That's just about right there. It's just a little bit high still, but a little bit high is about right because we're gonna drop the saddle down. This one's not quite as bad, but it's still high. 
The bass side on this was just off the charts high. You won't find it on a well-traveled highway Not even on a dusty gravel road And you have to want to be there when you find it For it's not on any maps Quite honestly, it's still a little high, but I think it's close enough that now I think I can get a decent reading on the saddle to take the saddle down. It's not terrible now. Need 20 thousandths off the base side. And 20 thousandths off the treble side. So I can take 20 thousandths off of both all the way across this and we'll be fine. So that's what I'm going to do. And we'll be in real good shape then. Out across the field, through the pasture. Climb along the steep and rocky trail. When you cross that little creek in the valley. So to take 20 thousandths off, I, you've seen this before but I'll just make a little mark here on both sides. I'll set my calipers for 20 thousandths if I can find them. In fact, I'm gonna use a different one. These calipers, the ends are kind of wore on them. So I'll set these little uh, analog calipers to 20 thousandths, which is not very much at all. And I'll scrape across here. Very minor marks that you can probably not even see, but I'm going to go ahead and slide it in until those marks disappear. And because I took those, uh, you know, took it off the bottom like that, I'm going to just f ever so lightly knock the corners off of this now on the bottom because the corners can stick on the way into the slot. They can grab, grab a hold of the wood on the edges on the sides and cause it not to go to the bottom and I don't want that so it doesn't take much you just gotta round those corners just the least little bit and everything should be fine okay I would say we are gonna be pretty close to our perfect setup now try to turn this down where you can see it get the glare off the meter there for you um, right on the money Right on the money. Right on the money. Just a fraction high, that's the way the B does a lot of times, you know. So I could taper this B spot back just a teeny bit. That would fix the sharpness on that B. You see that a lot on lots of saddles, so it's not uncommon at all. So I've loosened that up. I'll pull this out. And for my purposes, I'm gonna do it with my Dremel tool because it's just easier for me. I'm not sure this is the best way to do this because uh, you know, you could actually have a real problem with this, but I'm pretty good with the Dremel and I think I can pull it off. See that vine covered church on the hill. That vine covered church above the back. And I think I did it. And I'm just gonna erase the little pencil marks I put on the top up here. We'll put the B string back and that'll probably make the B string real close to perfect. Right on the money. So that's pretty good. That thing notes really well now. The action's nice and low. In fact, I didn't double check it, but I know it's really low. Um, about 85 on that side. About 
80 on this side, so we're really good. Let's play it and see what it sounds like. Well, my friends, I think this is set up really well. Notes really easy now. Intonation is just spot perfect on. And I rest my case about setting the intonation back here. You can do it back here. You don't definitely don't want to do it up at the nut like so many people try to tell you you can do it at the nut. You're always compromising when you do it at the nut. You're never going to get it right from the nut. And I know a lot of people will argue that till they die, but they're wrong. The nut is where everything is measured from. You don't want to screw with that. They always say, you can't make them perfect back here. Well, this one's as perfect as any guitar will ever be. So I'll stand by that. And that's the second to the last instrument that I'll probably ever set up on camera, as far as I can tell. Because the hands are not all that great. <laughs> one set up much better than that. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I do it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you down the road, but probably with something more like a farm video.